So, the Filipino community, we're the number three largest uh, visible minority community here in Toronto. Um, some of you might, or a lot of you probably are already familiar with our issues here. Uh, the photos being shown, it's just going to run on slideshow, are from a, few, a couple of different mining communities in the Philippines, Canadian mines, uh, because as we all know, Canada is one of the top mining countries in the world. 75% of the world's mines are, are based, are, are traded here on, at the TSX. Uh, and the Philippines is the second largest gold producer in the world uh, for its land mass, third in total. So, like, when I went to these places, that's basically where I started to see the links. Because I didn't even actually know about this mining issue until I got to the Philippines and someone just mentioned to be, it to me casually. And I was like, really? Mining? Canada? F Philippines? What's going on? Gold? Um, so, I decided to go to these places and that. The first thing that struck me is, as I drove into Marinduque, one of the oldest uh, gold mines in, in the Philippines, um, run by, uh, it's, it's been closed down for a few years now, but it was run by Placerdome, uh, which was bought out by Barrett Gold. And as soon as you drive into the main community there, it's, uh, the, all the buildings are run down. You can see, like, even the government buildings, the paint's fading. But everywhere you look, there are giant signs that says, work in Canada. Come work in Canada, we need domestic workers. Come work in Canada, tell us it's hiring. Um, come work in Canada, etc., etc., etc. So that's where you really start to feel this connection. Um, I go to these places, and, and then you get pa get past that, and you go actually into the mining communities, and you will start to see how depressing it is there. You will see, like the uh, I went to uh, Kanatuan. These ones are from Kanatuan, Toronto Ventures Incorporated, and uh, you'll s and when I got there, there are all these abandoned homes, basically because there used, that place used to be the home for 10,000 small-scale miners. And then Toronto Ventures Incorporated came in, and if you look at their website, they will boast that they created 800 jobs in the region. 10,000 miners, 800 jobs created in the region. What happened to those people? You just have to connect the dots. In town, what do you see? Come to Canada, come to Canada, come to Canada. In where these 10,000 used to work, what do you see? Clear-cut mines. And, and destroyed houses. And it's not just destroyed houses because the people left. Some of those houses were purposefully to scare the people away. Um, there is one lady, this is Jeryl, since the government was doing the indigenous village, actually put them out themselves. So the, the, the villagers put them on trial, and so I heard these women talk about how um, there was this one lady who said that in the middle of the night they came to her house and they dragged because her husband wasn't there. They dragged her out and they tore down, they, they bulldozed her house. Um, and then her husband came right in front of her and the children. Um, so this is just to link together what's happening right now. We're having an economic crisis here in Canada right now. Everything that's happening and that's been happening there for the last few decades, few years, is, is now starting to creep into Canada. And, we're, and this uh, is, it, it's, I bring this up because it's something that's new here, newish here, but it's old for us. Uh, it's been going on there for a while now. And like I said, when you look around Toronto these days, look around this area, actually. You'll see so many Filipinos, mostly women, and uh, most of them children inside. Um, so, it's n everything is linked together in this way. Every day in the Philippines, 500 approximately people leave the country to work abroad. Six to ten will back dead. Uh, I was, when I, uh, if you remember Juana Tejada, who here, uh, she had cancer, uh, uh, migrant lots for her to be uh, to stay. I was there when her body patriated. I have a story for the Toronto Star, if you read that story. Um, and when I saw that, it was pretty depressing because it comes out in this white box, um, cardboard box, comes out in a forklift uh, in the middle of the day, and they just kind of drop the body. The forklift goes away, and that's up to you to take care of the body. Um, and this is just one story, right? And this is the high one. And it's just like, it's, it's really kind of depressing when I look at what's happening. And it's, not, it's like, how many of us, there's 400,000 Filipinos, I think, in Canada, yeah? 400,000? 1,000 of those, uh, approximately have come in the last 20, 25 years through the Living Caregiver Program, most of those women. Um, 